this video, I'm going to show you how to solve two different ways of expressing concentration calculation questions which was asked by a viewer and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and click the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. The question says if a patient is determined to have 100 milligram percent of blood glucose, what is the equivalent concentration in terms of milligrams per deciliter? Now as a healthcare professional, one of the things that you're likely to come across is occasionally you will see values of laboratory tests that are expressed as milligram percent or milligram per deciliter. Now, milligram percent and milligram per deciliter are more or less equivalent and so it's important to understand how those two are related. And so, one of the things you should be able to do is convert between milligram percent to milligram per deciliter and also take these concentration and express them in different forms like a percentage concentration or a ratio strength. So, let's see what exactly is expected from this question. Here, the question is saying you have 100 milligram percent. And so what milligram percent means is the number of milligrams of a substance in 100 milliliters. So that definition is important to at least review or recollect because that will be needed to solve this question. And so the way we want to approach this question is to take the 100 milligram percent and express it in terms of what the definition implies. So that would imply that you have 100 milligrams in 100 milliliters. So once you've expressed it this way, based on the understanding of what milligram percent means, we can then go ahead and use dimensional analysis to convert it from milligrams per milliliter to milligrams per deciliter. And so the way it works is the conversion factor from milliliters to deciliters is one deciliter is equal to 100 milliliters. So the milliliters can cancel out and actually the 100 can cancel out. And so you are left with 100 milligram per deciliter. So 100 milligram percent is equivalent to 100 milligram per deciliter. And that makes sense because the two are essentially the same. So let's take a look at the next question. Here the question says strong iodine solution USP contains 5% weight by volume iodine. How many milligrams of iodine are consumed daily if the usual dose is 0.3 milliliters three times a day? So the way we want to approach this question is to take the percentage concentration set up a proportion using the total volume that the patient consumes in one day and then go ahead and determine the amount in grams that the patient receives and then convert that to milligrams. So the first thing we want to do here is to determine exactly how much volume of the iodine solution that the patient takes in one day. And the way we want to do that is to take the volume here which is 0 0.3 and this 0 0.3 milliliters is the volume for one dose. But notice that you are taking three doses in one day. And so what it will mean is you have 0 0.3 ml times 3. And that gives us 0 0.9 milliliters per day. So now that we know the volume that the patient takes per day, we can use the percentage concentration that is given as 5%. So that would imply you have 5 grams of iodine in 100 milliliters of iodine solution. And we want to set a proportion to determine how many grams we present in the 0 0.9 milliliters, which is the volume that the patient takes each day of this iodine solution. And so we can go ahead and solve for X, which is our unknown, and X is going to be equal to 5 grams times 0 0.9 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters, and that is equal to 0 0.045 grams. So we can multiply this by the conversion factor, which states that one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. The grams cancel out and this is equal to 45 milligrams. So those were two quick examples on calculations involving the different ways in which you express concentration. If you need a more exhaustive tutorial or just want to see more practice problems on percentage trend concentrations, I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description and I'm going to link the playlist in the cards as well. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.